this time we're talking about Crow Killer, the saga of lover eating Johnson. Picked for book club by Liz. So you get to kick us off with a synopsis. So for a quick overview, it wasn't really my pick. It was Tom's pick. True. Andrew Kelly's dad. And so based on his suggestion, I picked it for book club. I had no idea what this was about before I just threw the name Crow Killer out in the book club group text for everyone to buy. Turns so. out it is a nonfiction book. It's like a collection of stories, supposedly true stories, but like passed down and probably exaggerated stories about mountain men in the United States in like the mid to mid 1800s ish. And it focuses on Jeremiah or John Johnson, crow killer and his exploits. And um, crow is not the bird. He has a feud with the crow Indians and they go back and forth on trying to kill each other a lot. Um, as well as other Indians. This book is not, it's very insensitive, I would say. It is not mm. delicate. It has a lot of words that are not acceptable today. Mm -hmm. um, and it, life was very different back in the 1800s. So everyone should know that before reading this book. But it was good. I liked it. I think it does stay true to the times though. Like it tries to portray what they were saying and what they were doing. Um, as it would have happened yeah so yes as authentic as they probably could have i definitely get the feel like i get the impression that this book is like a kind of written as like a bunch of old guys talking about what they did in their younger days it like very much feels like that kind of story when we picked this book i really thought it was about this guy who hunted birds and ate their liver but it's not so spoiler alert it's not about that I really, I really oh, thought, good. I really thought a bird would come into play at some point. It yeah. never does. Never. Nope. Never. And for clarification, he is only at war with the Western crows, right? Like he's fine with the Eastern crows. So. It's important to know that. Yeah, it is. They're different. They're a different group of people. So. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Tom, for this lovely <laughs> suggestion. Um, made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I also want to know what about us made Tom be like you girls would like this book you know what <laughs> judging by his reaction when I told him we took his suggestion I think he just suggests things to suggest things I don't think he put a lot of thought in it or matched anybody's personalities I don't think we were thought of at all I think there was a person asking for a book and it was on his mind he was like you know what you would lie I don't I don't think he thought too deeply on that suggestion at all i mean okay let's do ratings because i think you'll probably find mine surprising i'll go first i okay. would rate this a solid b which is the highest nonfiction book i think i've rated that liz has chosen uh yes <laughs> i liked this way better than lord grizzly and way better than the last of the mohicans um i thought i though i wouldn't read it again probably because it was super graphic and very disturbing at parts. Uh, I thought it was really neat to le learn about the 1800s and like mountain men because I did not learn any of this stuff in like history class in school. Like none uh, it's of it. mostly like cowboys. Yeah, that's what it, I just liked the way it portrayed America at the time and like to learn about it in a way that was like stories, easy to follow, short chapters. I, I really liked it surprisingly all right let's you go what's your rating no you go last because you picked the book kelly you go um i'd give it probably a b plus i'd give it a little higher than a solid b for sure um you learned a little more in detail like beyond what they told you in school granted i mean we got the gist of it through movies in school um about how there was always a feud with um, the settlers and the Indians and there was like some scalping and like some massacres going on but they hit on the bare minimum and just like which I guess I wouldn't tell high school like I don't know that I would teach children what really happened in detail anyway but it was interesting to see 
and it does have the footnotes on where they got the information. So it is a little bit textbooky without being textbooky. Mm -hmm. And it was entertaining in the sense of you kind of felt like you were reading a story and then you had to remember that this is real life. People didn't make this up for the most part. Um, I don't know that I'd recommend it to like anybody that I know. Um, like Liz, or, like Liz said, super insensitive book and not for the faint of heart or the squeamish because they just tell it how it happened. But it was good. I, like I kept turning the page even though once I figured out what it was about and who the recommendation came from, I was like, oh, this is going to be the worst. Like, I was like, this is going to be like a history lesson with Tom and it's going to be terrible. But it wasn't so bad. So... <laughs> Don't judge a book by your father. There you go. Should. But it worked out in this case. Yeah. Okay, Anne, what is it? Hey, I picked C+. Mm. So the only reason I gave it a lower grade was because I like more story-like. Well, it was like a story, but it kind of like, since it was... A collection of excerpts from friends and such it kind of skipped I mean there's parts that we don't know what he was doing for whatever parts also it was like people talking I do not know what they were saying like half the time like they wrote it in like mountain man speak so I would read it and sometimes I read it like five times I'm like I have no idea what that says but I just like kept going and I also didn't like the writing style as much. I didn't think it was as like interesting. I felt like it was more historical. Well, they kind of told it in a story version. It still felt kind of like history instead of like story story. Mm -hmm. But so that's the reason I gave it like a lower grade. But I like the story and I like, I don't know, I like Native American books or whatever. I read um, Trail of Tears. So I don't know. I find this stuff more interesting. So I like history. So I really like the story. It was a little like, it's hard to say you like the story when it's yeah. about liver eating Johnson, but it was still interesting learning how people lived back then, mm -hmm. you know, as mountain men. Like I thought that part was interesting and it was like a little gory, but not too gory where I was like, creeped out the whole time or like grossed out like they just kind of say it and go on they don't like give too many details I don't know it's about in the middle of gory for me <laughs> it's a middle gory book guys <laughs> yeah I read one book about like drug cartels it was really bad <laughs> so this is like way less okay. than that one was it's interesting I think uh, to your point of like w how different their life was it's kind of surprising that it was only like the 1870s yeah um, like, such a different lifestyle values morals uh way of life and it really wasn't that too like that long ago yeah when they start like talking about when civilization kind of starts coming to that area mm -hmm. and they start, like the older mountain men start talking about like how they don't have to fight for anything anymore they just go to the store and stuff I yeah. thought it's interesting it's like yeah it has changed they'd be shocked now <laughs> it's crazy yeah. Liz rating so Andrea and I have a different rating for this book oh. finally yeah it's weird um I should have just lied and said it was a c plus but no I gave it a b I liked it I um I really like history books and like American history like nonfiction so I liked it because it was a good balance of like a, like told in story form but like historical and so I found it like fascinating and I had no idea about any of this stuff I think if you like it's kind of a similar story it's kind of like huge Hugh Glass like Lord Grizzly like some of the story that they put in like the Revenant and the movies like pulled from here I think um. It's kind of like meshed together with Hugh Glass's story. And it's just like fascinating, like what they did and what they went through. And it is super graphic and violent. Um, and it's obviously told from like one or a couple of people's point of view. So you get like a bias, but it's really interesting. So I liked it. I wouldn't read it again, but 
You would or wouldn't? I wouldn't. Um, I was kind of bummed that none of the writing like came from him like having a diary, which I guess Mountain Men probably wouldn't keep a diary. But it would have been cool to see like, uh, like, you know, Liver Eaton Johnson wrote this on this day or like told this story. I don't know. Something that was actual fact from him <laughs> versus a lot of it is based off of his friends and acquaintances, like people he met through his life, retelling the stories later on. Yep. That was, yeah. There's not like, there's like a couple firsthand accounts, like some of the stuff written down is from people who were there or like Johnson told them stories himself or like corrected it, but he seems like a very humble guy. Like he'd be like, no, it wasn't really like, it wasn't that extreme, you know? Like he seems like he's pretty. Some of the footnotes are like, hey, this person told this story and this person, and they were pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of got into reading the footnotes and then Mm kind of being like, all right. So they were kind of, they were kind of honest of like, this may or may not be true, or we heard it from one source only, and it's kind of iffy if it really happened this way. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool. Let's do spoilers, because we need to talk about the leg. Spoilers. Spoiler time. The leg. Like, I still, it just straight to it. Ross was sitting in the pool yesterday, and he was literally waving his legs, and I was like, oh my god, what if someone just took your leg for food? Like, explain what the leg is, Madeline. Okay. Let's give it a live. Like, I'll never eat chicken legs the same again. Um, <laughs> th- that part has, like, haunted me. Okay, so, Johnson gets caught by this, uh, taken hostage by an Indian, and while being held captive, he breaks free of his restraints, basically, kills the guard, and, well, no, he doesn't kill him. He scalps him and basically physically hurts him, and then realizes it's winter, and he's gonna have to walk, like, 200 miles, so what does Johnson do? He literally cuts off this guy's leg for food. I thought he and takes it with it off. And takes Didn't it. he just like snap it off, like twist it off? It sounded yeah, like I, he made strategic cuts true. as in like he's butchered before so that it uh, would come off fairly easily at the joint. Well, okay, then to make matters even more strange, he goes into a cave-like thing for the night and, you know, has his dinner there, his leg, which is now frozen, a mountain he's lion. sleeping with it. He's sleeping with this leg he stole from an alive human being. And a mountain lion comes in and tries to get his leg and not his leg, his dinner leg. And what does he Take do? It. He gets mad at the mountain lion and beats it with this frozen leg and the mountain lion runs off. And then there's like a bear hibernating in the cave that then tries to take the leg and he doesn't he like it whacks it on the nose right whacks it on the nose and the bear goes away this is like one of the stories that i think was super exaggerated yeah <laughs> um, i was waiting for a footnote from the mountain lion like yeah he totally did that to me but no yeah i don't i don't know i i don't know how true that is i I don't doubt for a minute that he took someone's leg. Um, it's the like double huge predator beat up that I'm kind of like, I-, mm-hmm. I don't know. Why is your first thought like, I'm going to be hungry. I'm taking this guy's leg. Like that <laughs> seems weird to me. No. Yeah. And then, okay. So at some point he had the leg, the leg thing was done. And he's like, I'm going to be out there without a shirt. Like the shirt. Oh yeah, after. he didn't have a shirt on either. Yeah, he just but he left. But I'm like no shirt. But he remembered the leg. So, yeah, when shit's going down, I'm my first thought would have been like, I need clothes. I need extra clothes. I need a blanket. I need like, not this dude's leg. <laughs> like I'll find food out there. Whatever. Like you've lived winter before. Why is it you have to take a? You've never done that before. You couldn't go trapping. That was your career. I don't know. I just thought it was weird. I was like, I would have picked a shirt first. Yeah. Also, um, he was in the middle of like an Indian tribe. Like there was no food to grab like on the way out. Like nothing. Like something. nothing. Just a leg. Yeah. 
That was fun. That was I think fun. one of my favorite stories is when, um, what's his name? Hatch. The one guy gets a wife, right? Yeah. And a wife, and he has her change. So he changes her name to John because he likes John Johnson so much. <laughs> Just creepy on a couple levels. <laughs> I really think if like I. I would love to hear his therapist take on that, you know, if they had those back in the day, but, and I kind of found it funny that like no one thought that was like, it's not like any of his friends gave him shit about it. It it was just a fact that was listed. And then that was it. I was like, can we go back to that guy and see what happened there? And like, I mean, the other, like you can buy wives like that. That's weird too. Right. Mm hmm mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in this book, though, that were just, just spoke to how different times are. Like, even... Um, the ice cream. Yeah, they had ice cream for the first time. And they, like, didn't know what it was, and they they weren't a fan they of it. They drank it. They tried yeah. to drink it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they called it stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, like, talked to each other about it. Trying to... Oh, and on that same steamboat, the favorite thing about Rome, too. Oh, yeah. That's all it was. The, the ladies on the, the fancy ladies on the steamboat asked one of the guys, like, do you have a wife? And he's like, yeah, I sent her to Rome. And they're like, oh my God, you sent your wife to Italy. Like, how adorable are you? You're such a nice guy. And he's like, no, I sent her to Rome the prairie alone. <laughs> no more wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> was he saying that like she died? No, I think he like sent her away. I thought he was like, Kind of like we're not like what those oh, two we're are awesome. yeah, yeah. We're oh, I took it as like she's holding down the fort while he's traveling. No, no. Oh, I, oh, this turned a lot meaner than I thought it was. Honestly, before this book, I never knew that scalping was such a uh, active like hobby, if you call it that, or actually they turned it. They turned it, it into job. currency. Yeah. Yeah. And like a trophy. Um, I mean, I've obviously been scalping before, but never to the extent that it was described in this book. Um, I had no idea that it was so prevalent or as prevalent as it was. Happening. I thought it was weird. Like, I remember hearing about it, like learning about it, that it was a thing to do. But I thought even if, like, if you actually did it, people were like, oh yeah, you scalp somebody. That's still mm -hmm. kind of mean. Like, I thought, but no, they like literally turn it into currency. Mm -hmm. And they had like different techniques. It was almost an art. Like, oh, and I they shared their art. techniques. Yeah. It was really, that was really disturbing. But the whole book was disturbing on like so many levels, right? Like, yeah. there was a lot of like, like obviously, like none of this would be appropriate to today. And it's like a historical perspective on like what it's supposed to be like what happened at the time. It's not that this is like okay, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like the author took a stance, like one more or the other. It really seemed like a historical, like here's just what we found out and what we heard, like, yeah, you know, interpret it or, you know, have your own views. I didn't think that it was strayed, like, one more. Yeah. Which I really appreciate. Like, I liked learning more about the mountain men and what life was like back then. It makes you appreciate how different it is now. Mm -hmm. And the weird, the thing was, is like, it, you made this point earlier, like, Madeline, like, it wasn't that long ago, really, right? Like, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't. And that's even weirder. It's interesting thinking about, like, it wasn't that long ago. So what's going to happen in, like, 50 or 100 years? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I'm just, like, we've come a long way in what's a short amount of time, in my opinion, like, in general, like, across the board. Like, that's some big strides. I think it would be interesting to read a book from, like, the same time period, but from, like, the Indians, the Native Americans' point of view. Because, like, this is obviously, like, very skewed, right? So, and I think, what Andrea, you read some, right? Like, I read Trail of Tears. It's the Cherokee Indians. It's different. interesting. It's kind of a big book, actually. But yeah, it was really interesting. I didn't realize that um, the different tribes of Indians would fight too. And like, they would have a problem with this group of settlers or mountain men 
but then they had a con- common enemy so they're like hey let's gang up on them I'm like mm-hmm. like there wasn't a great boundary which I think is still a thing for people but like they would forget their enemy for some time to gang up on somebody else I was like oh my god yeah like because by the halfway through the book he's friends with the crows again right yeah Mm -hmm. they're like good friends they trade weapons yeah and like at some point he was like considered a chief for somebody that was once his enemy I'm like okay yeah yeah twist of it all is that no one ever killed liver eating Johnson so like I just the biggest spoiler ever is like I really thought someone was gonna get this guy like he puts himself into too many bad situations like someone's gonna get him no dies of old age and well I thought like the what was the girl the waiting grass yeah remember he almost died there Mm -hmm. Ah. sure that was what was gonna happen he was just gonna get like old and forgetful and Mm -hmm. i so thought he was gonna die there but no he did not no do you guys think him and waving grass were really buried no no (laughs) there was like there was some rampant sexism in this book (laughs) oh yeah i'll read that line to everyone because I have it underlined. So basically, Johnson comes across Waving Grass, who's out roaming by herself. And he saves her because he has, like, food and everything. And she proves to be able to, like, hold her own. Johnson decides to keep her around because he was behind in his mending and tired of cooking. So Waving Grass then joined his little, joined us as partner, and they trapped and they lived life together, but they were not, uh, according to Johnson, they were not romantically involved. But according to her, she was his squaw. That's what she said. They oh, romantic. To talk. <laughs> Never, you know, define the relationship. They didn't. They were not Facebook official. No. I didn't even really know, like, mountain men were a thing or as much of a thing right like I knew like a few who Hugh Glass was because we read the other book but I didn't really understand like this is like a profession and there was a group Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah I thought there were like a few of them okay and I did not think that you know I'm sure they were like hermits or whatever is what I kind of thought they were I did not know there was like a band of them and they were like excited to see each other and they like kept tabs on each other and were like call me if you need to go massacre other people (laughs) send word i don't know i wonder like when any mountain men still kind of around like in the appalachian mountains and stuff like people live pretty off the grid there oh yeah we went in north carolina i mean there's a lot of remote Mm -hmm. and stuff that you know they probably i don't know what they do for a living or Mm. they are trappers or what but it seems like most of the mountain men were just trappers, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, if any of our viewers know any mountain men that would jump on a call with us. <laughs> for edu- yeah. Just for educational purposes. We, we can't mend things. Okay. We, we, can't. Can't. we can't even cook. No one's trying to find us or anything. We are just trying to learn. <laughs> How did we all get married? I don't know. I can cook. <laughs> I don't know. I can't like, pot it. real good. <laughs> yeah, speaking of... Would you guys recommend this book to anyone? I would recommend it to people if they were, like, into history stuff. I, I mean, would, but I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Like, I... It'd, it'd be a careful selection. I know. Like, Trail of Tears, it's sad, but it's still interesting. This was mm-hmm. kind of disturbing yet interesting i don't know so many it was disturbing on so many levels but like yeah. you couldn't like stop reading yeah okay i would recommend this to two people one Who's mom <laughs> who recommended it to us two john i sent john a copy i think he's actually really gonna like this john's our cousin oh yeah i forgot that you guys did that mm-hmm. like you're gonna say i forgot john was our cousin no, that you that guys. Know. 
<laughs> that you guys sent the book. I forgot. We, and we talked to him about it. History, a person who likes history, I totally would. But I really want to know what's true in this book and what's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. You're never going to know. I think it's true, just exaggerated. Yeah. I would bet that every story in here has some sort of basis in truth. It is just stretched. Yes. But that's yeah. my opinion. I mean, I'm going to try to kill a bear with a frozen leg, but we'll see. So this was our latest book club book. And next we're reading, what is it? We what start it tomorrow. I forgot its name. Uh, Grown up glass. glass. Ah! <laughs> my dog did that. I'm sorry. Throne of Glass by Sarah Moss. Yes. Yeah. So I think we'll finish that one pretty quick. So that should be one of the upcoming reviews. It's going to be a very different tone than this book. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. Magic. Maybe we should recommend read. It was about assassins, you guys. Like, I don't know if it's going to be. Oh, God, you're right. <laughs> Why can't we read happy books? <laughs> we even told her to pick a happy book. Oh, no. And she's like, I think this will be good. She didn't say happy. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's she fair, said, but you don't. She we said should, assassins. Assassins. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you have it. Crow Killer. Uh, the saga of Liberty Johnson. Super good historical read. Not about crows. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs>